Hi, I'm Dr. Jeanette Jackson, Chancellor of the Chabot Las Positas Community College District and Co-Chair of the Community College League of California's CEO CTE Advisory Committee. In this video, I want to talk about the important role that data and accountability play in ensuring that our efforts at building a strong workforce are successful. There are two recent movements in community colleges that have called for meaningful responses. One of them is accountability, and the other is the use of data to inform decisions. While these apply campus-wide, there is a particular impact on career and technical education, or CTE, where labor market demand and employment outcomes are important considerations. We believe that efforts on the front end to collect quality data to guide our decision making makes us more efficient and saves time down the road. It enables us to continue to improve our programs as we strive to meet the goals of a more and better CTE. CTE is accountable to a multiple systems that monitor outcomes that is tracked by the Student Success Scorecard, the Federal Carl D. Perkins Act, the Strong Workforce Program, and the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act, or WIOA for short. Let's touch on each of these individually, starting with the most familiar of the systems, the system-wide Student Success Scorecard. The scorecard allows us to track progress in key areas for all community college students, and it also includes two CTE measures. The first reports the percentage of students who completed programs, and the other reports the median percentage change in wages for students who left the community college system without completing a program or transferring to a four-year college. This second measure helps us gauge to what extent even some coursework can impact a student's earning ability. This second group is known as Skill Builder. CTE is also accountable to the Strong Workforce Program, which the legislature passed in 2015. This is where the more better CTE goals come from. The initiative established the goals and put in place ways to measure progress towards them. The legislature also asked that to the degree possible, the metrics be aligned with the federal WIOA measures. The strong workforce program includes nine metrics which can be grouped into three categories, completion, employment, and income gain. The employment and income gain categories add a new dimension in accountability for California community colleges. These help us understand the impact and completing a program has on a student's ability to secure a job and earn a higher income. These metrics will be used starting in the 2017-18 fiscal year to help determine allocations for the portion of strong workforce funding that goes to colleges and regions. More information about strong workforce measures can be found on the State Chancellor's Office website. At the federal level, we have the Carl D. Perkins Program. It is a long-standing program that provides targeted assistance to CTE. Most colleges receive these funds and must report outcomes. Some of the areas that are tracked include course success, program completion, and employment. This particular funding stream also has a unique measure that looks at gender participation in occupational areas, highlighting the need for gender diversity in occupations. Also, the Federal Workforce Investment Opportunity Act has a set of separate but related measures for youth participant and for adult participants. WIOA measures emphasize employment, income gain, and educational completion. WIOA has traditionally been a work-first program, however, there is an increasing recognition that gaining new skills is a critical part of successfully re-engaging displaced workers in the workforce. WIOA services are delivered through local workforce boards, and some colleges provide training and employment services to the board's participants. These colleges must meet WIOA accountability standards in order to receive full funding for providing contracted services. While the array of accountability systems can be confusing, there is a concerted effort as these programs are reauthorized and implemented to align their accountability requirements. We already see this with the Strong Workforce Program and the Adult Education Basic Grants. 
As a final note, a college that receives grants from other states and federal programs, as well as from foundations, may have unique accountability measures for each funding source. Now that we've covered the various CTE accountability systems, it's important to remind ourselves of accountability basics. We are called upon to interpret accountability results and lead discussions about the implications of those results. It may be with our board of trustees or a community group. The most important starting point in any accountability system is to know who is being tracked and what data are being used to do the tracking. While most metrics result in a number or percentage, the parameters used in arriving at that number or percentage are significant. For something as common as, say, the completion rate, varying results could be reported, depending on how the system defines the populations being tracked. For example, is a cohort being tracked comprised only of first-time students, full-time students, must these students take a minimum number of units to be included in the cohort? And are there specific classes that these students must take to be included in the cohort? There are many other factors that affect such as the reporting period, the completeness of the data, the source of the data, and so on. The point here is understanding these factors is critical for you and your campus colleagues as users of this data. With employment and income data being new to the accountability system, we should take a couple more minutes to touch on these. Most employment and income data come from matches of student records with employer payments into the state unemployment insurance system. While this system captures a healthy percentage of our students, between 75% and 80%, it doesn't account for all students. Two notable groups who are not captured by the system are self-employed individuals and individuals who do not have a social security number. This leads to gaps in the data for certain occupations and specific groups. For example, most cosmetologists and real estate agents are self-employed. No income is reported to the unemployment insurance system for these individuals. For accountability purposes, we look at three areas, employment, employment in the field of study, and income. These measures give us valuable information about how many students found jobs after completing a program and how many are working in the field or related field in the program they completed. With more income, the question is not just how much students are making, but is there an income gain? That is, how much more are they making after completing a program? A second factor is whether the income is as much or more than the established living wage in the region. Now, we would be remiss if we did not offer a cautionary note in using employment and income accountability measures. The economy is the main driver of employment and income, and it's a factor we have little control over. We do believe that by offering our students high quality education in relevant occupations, we can indirectly impact employment and income by giving them the best possible chance to succeed. While accountability systems have their flaws, in the end, they allow us to demonstrate our value to students, to the community, and to policymakers. In CTE, there is an emphasis on the use of labor market information, or LMI. We have always been required to use labor market data to justify proposals for new programs. What is new is that local and state plans outlining how strong workforce money will be spent must include evidence that the funds are being spent in economic sectors that are thriving and on careers where employment is growing. Additionally, we are now expected to show that the program we provide offer a living wage. Also, Ed Code required colleges to do a biannual report to their local boards to demonstrate that there is a labor market demand for existing programs. While LMI provides powerful evidence, it should always be checked against employers in a college's service area. 
Special focus groups or college advisory committees can be engaged for the review to validate the LMI data. There are some points to highlight when talking about using labor market information. First, it's important to note that the amount of money paid in an occupational area is not the only measure of value. There are occupations such as child development that offer low wages but are vital to society. Second, we need to combine multiple data sources and approaches to LMI issues. Each source offers a piece of the puzzle but is not complete in and of itself. And finally, be aware that transfer students are not included in most employment outcome data. Excluding that group from the data is necessary to get a clear understanding of the impact community college programs have on employment. The good news is that there is a rich set of tools to help you serve your students' CTE needs and meet accountability and planning needs. LaunchBoard is a relatively new and powerful tool. It is a data portal that brings together information from multiple sources into one place. It has a strong reporting system. LaunchBoard can develop college level, regional, or statewide reports on topics like labor market supply, and it can also easily be applied to important campus tasks such as program planning, program review, and accreditation. The CTE Outcome Survey is another tool that has recently been adopted by colleges across the state. It is an annual survey sent to college leavers. The survey asks the questions about outcomes and program satisfaction. The results are provided at statewide, college, and program level. This qualitative information provides a complement to the other data sources. The scorecard, as discussed earlier, provides data on two CTE outcomes, completion and skill builder success. Salary Surfer provides statewide data on pre and post earnings for completers in community college programs. It is built by matching community college leavers to EDD wage data. This data helps policymakers at the state and local levels avail themselves to evaluate the economic outcomes of occupational fields. Wage Tracker is a look at pre and post earnings for completers at the college level. This is useful information for local decision makers and for potential students who are deciding what field of study they want to pursue. In closing, as CEOs, it is important that we build a culture of data-informed decision-making at our campuses, whether it's for CTE or for any of our other programs. It should be apparent from the presentation that there are a variety of data tools and data sources to help us in this role. In addition, there are several resources available on the Doing What Matters section of the State Chancellor's Office webpage. If you are interested in technical assistance for your campus, you can contact the Data Unlock Project through the State Chancellor's Office. Thank you. Mm -hmm.